بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا قائد الغر المحجلين وشفيع المذنبين وسيد ولد آدم والفخر محمد ابن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته وانتهى جنهجه إلى يوم الدين تركنا عن محجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ثم أما بعد So alhamdulillah we're reading and continuing in our sessions The journey is the destination, the way, the path of the arifin and the muhubbin and the abidin And uh, insha'Allah al-fa'izin So <coughs> we were looking at uh, what the author describes of the book that we're referencing, Qutb uh, al-Arifin, the guiding pole of the knowers of Allah, what he talks about, al-Mi'raj al-Thalath, the three ascendancies, and we are in the midst of uh, the third one. And he describes this as from moving from the place of Imtithal al-Amr, Wajtinab al-Nahi, to rise from just mere, let's call it uh, procedure, and following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding his prohibitions. So that is uh, praiseworthy and it's honorable and it's uh, necessary. But if it becomes habitual or formalistic or procedural, let's call it, or transactional, um, here the author is telling us that we can rise above that to something that's more devotional that will avail one of more of the inner light uh, and the uh, spiritual benefits that come with these acts of worship because they are not sought in of themselves but they are there and required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a, may, in a ma manner so that we can come to him and that he could bring us to him so uh, within this mi'raj now he's going to go into uh, a few things uh, that are connected to it. So the next section we're looking at, this fast section, Al-Uruj ila maqam al-Zuhdi wa awu suluk tariq al-Mafawiz. So rising up to the station, spiritual station of Zuhud, of renunciation, and it is the first uh, spot or, or first uh, stop along the way that you're going towards tariq al-Mafawiz. Now you're getting into a place that there's uh, uh, and there's going to be difficulties and there's going to be you know traversing the really the inner depths of your of your soul and you're going to encounter maybe some ugly things that you're going to see about yourself <coughs> and you'll see that your irada even if it is strong your will if it is strong you will find that your nafs your ego is not always cooperative uh, and in fact will give you a hard time and will struggle struggle to surrender to that which you want to go go towards and that's all normal so if you encounter that uh, it's to be expected and uh, it will vary in intensity uh, the the level of intensity is not necessarily an indicator of how far you moved along or how much left you have to go uh, the tricky thing about the nefs is if it feels that it is losing the battle uh, then it, it will even become uh, more recalcitrant and uh, more difficult to overcome. In, in a sense, if it feels cornered, it might throw everything it has at you. So in a sense, the nefs, it's like a, a, a spoiled child. So if you take everything away all at once from the spoiled child, then uh, it may not produce the effective results that you're seeing. So that's where there has to be some sort of let's call it diplomacy uh, with the nafs and uh, what we call the tadrij you know take it step by step you know don't just kind of seek to uh, throw it in the uh, basement uh, room downstairs in the cellar and close the door upon it and lock it up and never let it out and then think that you're not going to hear any noise coming from the cellar that's going to affect the rest of the house you will so uh, there is a type of uh, siyasa we can call it diplomacy in, in dealing with our nufus and ideally that should be done under the supervision of a mentor or a sheikh someone who's, who's trained in uh, in encountering these things because they've done it with himself or herself 
but we're looking at this so that we can learn about it and even though it might be mostly theory for many of us nevertheless I think there's a lot of benefits to to see uh, what this sort of thing looks like and the Arifun uh, the ones who traversed this past before us they documented much of this and a lot of this that they're talking about yes it's indeed uh, comes directly from the Quran and Sunnah as we see with our author al Lijai but um, uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain that he also is speaking experientially he's speaking from uh, a point of having gone through uh, this himself uh, and, and is kind of sharing that experience with us so I think that's also uh, inshallah very beneficial so this particular Mi'raj al Uruj ila maqam al-Zuhdi so going to the maqam of Zuhd awul suluk tariq al-Mafawiz Sometimes they talk about Maqam al Khawf first. I think he delays that till after this or fear, but usually they go in tandem. So he says, Radiallahu anhu wa anna wa ankum wa alam rahimakallah anna al uruja ila maqam al zuhdi huwa awulu suluk li tariq al mafawiz wa in kana al zuhdu matlubun li gayrihi la li nafsihi la anna al zuhda laysa lahu faida tustafadu ila qatra al shawaghili wal awaiq. التي تشين السالك في سرعة سيره وتبطئ به لحوق الواصلين. So he says, No, may Allah have mercy upon you that rising to the maqam of the zuhud, the station of zuhud, renunciation, أول سلوك طريق المفاوز. Right, now you're getting into serious business is what he's saying, more or less. Uh, you've, you've, you've retreated or you've risen up from kind of the banality of procedural Islam, so to speak, uh, just following the rules and hoping for the best and then kind of living your life whichever way you want outside of that. And now you're getting into, like, I want to live this thing, these meanings, in every moment of my life, right? And I want it to inform every decision that I make in life. And I want it to inform how I conduct my relationships. So that's why he's calling it, here we go, you know, so to speak. And then he says, وَإِنْ كَانَ الزُّهْدُ مَطْلُوبٌ لِغَيْرِهِ لَا لِنَفْسِهِ Right, so the maqam of zuhud, renunciation of the dunya, matlubun, when kana matluban li ghayrihi la li nafsi. So you're seeking it not in of itself, but it's a means to an ends. What ends is that? He says, la anna zuhda laysa lahu faida tun tustafadu illa qat al shawaghili wal awaiq. He said the real benefit, or there's really no true benefit out of zuhud, out of renouncing things, right? Because it's like saying, no, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. I want to refrain from this. What's the point of that? The fa'ida, the benefit. Illa qat al shawaghili wal awaiq. The main point of it is to remove or get by shawaghil an awaiq. Things that are distracting. Al ashya alati tajgaluka. Things that keep you busy for no reason. Wal awaiq. And the obstacles. Al ashya alati tu'iquha an hadafak. You know, the things that hinder you or prevent you from getting to your goal, namely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or ma'rifatillah, knowing Allah. Alati tashinu salik, right, tashinu yani blemishes a salik, the one who is seeking, fi surati sayrihi wa tubti'u bihi an al-huq al Right, so it kind of, it, it, uh, it trips you up, maybe I would translate it as, trips you up, because he's talking about sayr, right, going towards Allah. So it trips you up, slows you down, عن لحوق الواصلين from getting to those who are الواصلين those who have arrived at this more profound sense of let's call it uh, devotional Islam فصل في بيان الشواغل والعوائق so what, is these, what are these شواغل and these عوائق what are these things that I'm going to trip over and that are going to keep me busy for no reason that I have to be careful about that Zuhud is going to help me solve he says, "Alam rahimak Allah, anha ta'tarid li ahli hadha al-maqam shawaghil wa awaiq laulaha ma ajaz an al-mi'raj al-thalith ahl al-mi'raj al-thani." He says, "No, may Allah have mercy upon you, that people of this maqam will come across distractions and 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 obstacles that would prevent them from reaching this mi'raj al-thalith, right? To reach this higher devotional." practice and understanding of Islam. So from the Ahl al-Ma'raj al-Thani, those who are following more of a procedural type of uh, Islam, 
to a more or transactional to a more devotional type of Islam. What keeps them from doing that? That's the idea. There are things that are going to distract them and hinder them. That really is the, the preventive that lets, stops them from getting to this place, which is in Ma'raj al the devotional practice of Islam. فَمِنْ شَوَاغِلِهِ وَعَوَائِقِهِ طَلَبُ الرِّزْقِ وَصَرْفُ الْهِمَّةِ إِلَى الْإِشْتِغَالِ بِهِ وَتَخَبُّتُ الْقَلْبِ فِي تَدْبِيرِهِ مَعَ نِسْيَانِ الْمَأْمُولِ مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ So from amongst these distractions and hindrances is the seeking of one's sustenance وَصَرْفُ الْهِمَّةِ And the, I would call it the total occupation of one's aspiration in working towards it. Sarful Himma means you're completely immersed in that. I just have to worry about my career and my job and my promotion and how much money I have and how many cars I have and how many garages in my house and all this sort of thing. Sarful Himma ila dalik. So being kind of preoccupied or devoting one's mental and emotional and spiritual aspiration towards that one goal. He said this is a major aiq, right? It's a major thing that's going to hinder you. Watahabutul qalbi fi tadbirihi. Right, تَخَبُّتُ الْقَلْبِ فِي تَدْبِيرِهِ So, and the, you know, the busyness and the oscillation of the heart back and forth in trying to figure it out, right? التدبير مَعَ نِسْيَانِ الْمَأْمُولِ مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And this is important, مَعَ Right, so there's a مَعِيَ يعني accompanied by, at the same time نِسْيَانِ الْمَأْمُولِ مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And also at the same time forgetting that which Allah uh, we are hopeful from from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Noah say was say right risk your sustenance is coming to you whether it's going to be wasa whether it's going to be wide and vast and a lot or whether it's going to be kafaf or whether it's just going to be enough for you that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you really don't have much say over that at all and so if we are busy with seeking it and acquiring it and planning for it and all those things and at the same time we forget Allah's promise we forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the one who has promised us that he is going to give us our sustenance and we forget all of that at the same time then it becomes yes indeed a true uh, you know and just the fact that usually when we talk about this subject we have to preface it with so many qualifications because it's, for some people it's quite stunning like what do you mean I don't have to worry about my, my living and, and it, that's what everybody worries about that's what everybody's busy with that's what everybody's chasing after uh, how, how can that be that I, I, I you know are you saying that I should stay in my house and just wait for things to come and not do anything no clearly he's not saying that but that's how we look at it we look at it as one extreme or the other Either I wait for her in my house and then, you know, the rainbow with the pot of gold will come down the rainbow and, and I don't have to even seek it. That type of scenario that people have in their mind. Or unless, you know, I am spending every waking minute, minute just thinking about and acquiring and uh, struggling to get all the things that are supposed to come to me or that I think I should, co should come to me is the other extreme. But a happy medium is الأخذ بالأسباب مع الاعتماد على المسبب which he's going to talk about later. Which is to avail oneself of al asbab of these intermediate causes right well uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa musabbib al asbab allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who put those intermediate causes into place so if i throw a, a ball up in the air it comes down that's a sabab but the one who's making the ball come down is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so we have ihtiram al asbab we respect the asbab ma'adam al i'timad alayha but we do not depend upon them and rely upon them and make them our God, so to speak, if we then excise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the equation and then we put all of our ma'mool, all of our amal, all of our hopes in the asbab and not in al-musabib, not in the one who created the asbab or the intermediate causes. Then he says, لَكَنْ يَسْتَعِدُّ الْعَبْدُ بِهَذِي الشَّوَاغِرِ وَالْعَوَائِقِ بِنَظْرِ بَصِيرَتِهِ إِلَى الْقِسْمَةِ السَّابِقَةِ فِي الْأَزَلِ وَكَيْفَ ضَمِنَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ الْأَرْزَاقَ وَأَقْصَمَ عَلَيْهَا بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌّ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْتِقُونَ Surah Al-Dhariyat, Ayah 22-23 to 
فإنه عز وجل قسم الرزق في الأزل وجزأه على عمر العبد ووقت أوقاته وحد للعبد ما يأتيه منه في السنة والشهر واليوم والساعة فكل ما حد لك أن تناله من رزقك عند صلاة العصر من يومك ذلك لن تناله عند صلاة الصبح من يومك ذلك ولو كنت طلبته بكل حيلة في السماوات والأرض فإن الطلب لا يجمع والتوكل لا يمنع لكن تحقق كل مؤمن أن الله عز وجل قد ضمن رزقه يعني هي يعني جمع وفصل يعني he kind of put it very succinctly and, 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 uh, and also comprehensively at the same time so he says لكن however after all what we said before about people being busy what should be done uh, instead يستعد العبد بهذه الشوائر والعوائق بنظر بصيرته right that you can um, overcome or prepare oneself to dealing with these shawaghil and these awaiq, with these distractions and these hindrances, binadri, or binadri basiratihi ila al qismat al sabiqat fi al azal. Right? Now this needs basira, not just basar. So basar means I open my app and my phone and I look at my bank account and I see however number of zeros after some number. Hada basar, right? And, 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 and you may get, it's mitnan, you may get a feeling of uh, uh, tranquility and serenity and then if those zeros start to become less so instead of five zeros after them, then they become four then they become three then you start to become worried and there's nothing else coming in so that's basar he's saying here use al basira the inner eye or the spiritual eye so binadr basiratihi ila al qismati sabiqati fil azal here's that word again al azal Right, all of this, all that we are, and all that's going on, all that's going to happen to you tomorrow and the day after, the month after that, and the year after that, until the end of your life, all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know or knew and still knows and knew it from Al Azal. In other words, it's been known eternally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this qisma, right, qisma means your share, your allotment, your distribution, is something that Allah determined already fil azal. Whether you're going to be min al aghniya or min al fuqara, or min al mutawassitin, you know whether you're going to be very wealthy or not so wealthy or middle class, whatever you want to call it, um, all of that. Tanzur bi basiratika ila al qismat al sabiqat fi al azal. Be mutayqin, be completely certain that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has already, uh, you know, decreed that distribution for you. And at the same time, okay, for Dhamin Allah Azza wa Jal al arzaq. Right, and he has promised you. وَأَقْصَمَ عَلَيْهَا Right, and he has even sworn to it. And some of the Mufassirun, they said, why would Allah swear here? We, he just has to tell us. It's because we don't believe it. Right, and in, in Balagha, in Arabic rhetoric, when you have to uh, uh, put a lot of tawkidat, uh, they say, or ta'kidat, a lot of uh, emphasizing qualifiers on something. No, Wallahi, it's really like this, and no, absolutely, and you know, for sure, and what we call a ta'kid, adawat uh, al-ta'kid, and amongst the strongest of them is al-qasam, right? Is to actually swear. La wallahi, this is the way it is. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this because we don't believe it. And even after we read this verse, fi nafsina shay', right? We still kind of, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, if you keep saying, yeah, I know, but, then do you really believe madmoon al ayah Right, what the, what the verse is really saying. So when he says in Surah Al Dhariyat, فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْتِقُونَ So by the Lord of the heaven and the earth, إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌ What is this? Your rizq, your sustenance. It is حَق مِثْلِ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْتِقُونَ It is as حَق and as real as you speaking. Just as, as sure that you can speak and words come out of your mouth, it's that sure. فإن الله عز وجل قسم الرزق في الأزل وجزأه. So Allah distributed this ar- these arzaq, your sustenance for everyone, or how many number of billion of people that are ever going to live or more, في الأزل. So it's also eternally been known and eternally been determined. وجزأه على عمر العبد, and he has distributed over the span of the lifetime of the servant. Servant. ووقت أوقاته. 
right? And he's determined when you will get it. وَحَدَّ لِلْعَبْدِ مَا يَأْتِيهِ مِنْهُ فِي السَّنَةِ وَالشَّهْرِ وَالْيَوْمَ السَّاعَةِ And he also has determined how much you get in the year, or in this particular month, or in this particular day, or in this particular hour. فَكُلُّ مَا حَدَّ لَكَ أَن تَنَالَهُ مِنْ رِزْقِكَ عَنْدَ صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ مِنْ يَوْمِكَ ذَلِكَ لَنْ تَنَالُهُ عَنْدَ صَلَاةِ الصُّبْحِ So if Allah determined that عَنْدَ صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ You're getting kit wa kit, you're getting this much. مِنْ يَوْمِكَ This particular day. لَنْ تَنَالُهُ عَنْدَ صَلَاةِ الصُّبْحِ مِنْ يَوْمِكَ ذَلِكَ So if you're supposed to get it at Asr, you're going to get it at Asr. And there's nothing you can do to have moved it up so that you get it at Salat al-Subhi, at the morning prayer. وَلَوْ كُنْتْ طَلَبْتَهُ بِكُلِّ حِيلَةٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Even if you were to seek it, بِكُلِّ حِيلَةٍ right? By every stratagem that you can think of in the heavens and the earth, فَإِنَّ الطَّلَبَ لَا يَجْمَعَ الطَّلَبَ لَا يَجْمَعَ right? You're asking for it, you're supplicating for it, is not going to acquire it. The acquisition of one's sustenance is completely determined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you asking for it or not is not going to make a difference. وَالتَّوَكَّلُوا لَا يَمْنَعَ وَالتَّوَكَّلُوا يَا نَمْنَعَ فَالطَّلَبُوا لَا يَجْمَعَ وَالتَّوَكَّلُوا أو إِنَّ التَّوَكَّلَ لَا يَمْنَعَ And having reliance, sufficient reliance or complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يَمْنَعَ الرِّزْق does not stop it from coming to you. So if you feel uh, ascertained in your heart and, and mutma'in and, and tranquil and serene about it that is coming to you that feeling of yours is not going to stop it from coming and you shouldn't say well maybe I should have done more or I should have done this or I should have you know been smarter so forth لا يمنع it's not going to stop it لكن تحقق كل مؤمن أن الله عز وجل قد ضمن رزقه rather تحقق right be certain, absolutely certain, actualize within yourself that every believer, this is part of our iman, that every believer, ha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has guaranteed them their sustenance. And not just the believers. That's what Allah says. There's no animal, there's no ant, there's no caterpillar, uh, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives it it's Allah that Allah SWT has prescribed for himself that he will give it his sustenance and Allah knows where it is and where it's not going to be so uh, this talab uh, al-rizq right Allah the Prophet وسلم, he said that Allah is going to give us our rizq ولكن أجملوا في الطلب right أجملوا في الطلب is you know uh, seek it in the beautiful way ajmilu. seek it by the sh sharia means seek it by the sharia sanctioned way right don't use your hiyal don't use your stratagems right and your machinations uh, that are going to be fueled by the nafs to try to acquire in a way that's other than honorable that's other than honorable so making the quick buck or the fast buck or you know winning the lottery or these sorts of things that people try these um, get rich quick schemes and so forth these are not very honorable ways. Uh, the the idea of rizq, right, is that uh, we add value to society, we add value to the community, and then that value is recognized in a way that then is going to be compensated somehow. That's if you're delivering services, or if you're delivering goods, right? People need to live in houses, people need to drive cars, people need to um, uh, put olive oil on their hummus and their lebni. So uh, you, you, if you're dealing in, in those things, then you are serving a need for people. And at the same time, this is your risk, right? This is uh, a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has determined that you're going to have your sustenance. So it should not be the, pre the, the, the premier preoccupation of the believer, uh, let alone the arif. So in the arifu, not all of them were were, were uh, darawish or dervishes and lived in the mountains and caves and ate shrubs and, and you know lived whatever watermelon rinds they can find by the side of the river. Yes, you read stories about people like that. But not all of them were like that. The Arif Billah could be someone that is very unassuming that you had no idea could be from the Arifin and they could also be a very wealthy person or they can be not such a wealthy person. It, co it will come in all walks of life and um, it's not for, for us to kind of determine this person, that person, what they should look like and how they should appear and so forth.
Then he's going to tell us about, well, what should our attitude towards al arzaq be? How should we go about doing it? He's going to tell you there's three types of people. وَاخْتَلَفُوا فِي طَلْبِ الرِّزْقِ عَلَى ثَلَاثَةِ أَوْجُهُ And before I get to that, one other thing that I just thought of. Um, most people, or I should say not most, but many people, what they worry about in terms of rizq and sustenance is not, sometimes you worry about your current situation, but you're not really worrying so much about your current situation. You're worrying about what's it going to look like in the future. You know, what's it going to look like a year from now or a month from now or a week from now? Will I have enough for next week? That sort of thing. And um, the thing is to worry about something where the time that you may or may not live up to hasn't been known by you as of yet is a waste of time. So if you're worrying about whether your retirement account is going to shrink because of the COVID-19 pandemic or what should I do and is it going to be enough and then if it's not enough, what should I do at that point and something that may be years off, well, you may not live to that point that's years off. So to expend so much energy um, and, and time and, you know, it's, it's like you're giving up real estate in your heart for that, right? You only have so much real estate in your heart. Your heart can only think about so many things and be concerned with so many things. And so to kind of give it all up so freely for something so really superfluous and, and trivial and also poisonous and damaging at the same time doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. So rather, tawakkal ala Allah. Don't worry about a month from now or two months from now or a year from now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and don't say to yourself, if, well, if I don't have it from this place, then where will I get it? How else am I going to make money? Allah tells us clearly in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Have taqwa of Allah, and Allah will find an opening for you, a way out of whatever deep, whatever constricted circumstance you find yourself in. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And he will give him or her sustenance from even that which they did not consider. From a place they didn't even think about. So uh, let Allah SWT determine that for you. You don't have to know all of the sources of, of your potential or future um, income where it may come from or where it may not come from. Allah knows that. And you should be sufficed with Allah's knowledge of that, even though you may not know it. Right? That's the, one of the meanings of tawakkul. To put complete agency in the knowledge of God and not so much uh, depend upon your own personal knowledge. Because our own personal knowledge, one, is limited, and two, it's faulty, it may not always be right, and certainly it doesn't know the future. And none of those things are true about the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, They uh, there's, uh, they differed in terms of how one seeks one's sustenance, three different aspects or three different ways. The first group, فأهل هذا الوجه يقطع كلام عنهم ولا تسطر أحوالهم إذ لا فائدة في ذكرهم من أجل ما هم عليه من سوء الحال وسلوكهم طريق الهلاك وهم عارفون به عصمنا الله وإياك مما ابتلي به هذا الصنف So he says the first group they seek their uh, sustenance بقهر right or غلبة so by um, overwhelming people or by uh, uh, or by the nature of their status or their prestige or stealing or embezzling or uh, uh, trickery or violence or something other than this from the ways of seeking one's sustenance that are blameworthy that is rejected by the people of wara right? anyone who has an ounce of scruples is not going to engage in any of that stuff to get a dollar or a dirham so these people, we're not even going to talk about them. And we're not going to talk about their ahwal or write about or give any lines of my book over to talking about their state. As there is no benefit in thinking about them or talking about them due to the very serious and bad state that they're in. And the way that they're seeking things is a way and a path of destruction when they, if they are aware of what they are doing. 
Asamana Allahu wa iyaka mimma tulia bihi hadha sinf. May Allah protect us and you from this trial and tribulation that this particular group finds themselves in. So they're not even worth talking about in terms of suluk, because it's not suluk, it's just following one's women caprice and uh, actually uh, falling into the default state of I'll just justify whatever I can justify because you know I feel like I need to do this when actually the nafs has tricked you into thinking you need to do that. And then people use the justifications, oh everybody's doing it, it's not a big deal. Um, uh, if I don't do this, then how else am I going to eat? How else am I going to live? How else am I going to do that? So these sort of justifications that come up. فَصْلٌ هَلْ الرِّزْقُ مِنَ السَّبِبِ أَمْ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّبِ Now we're going to talk about the other two groups that are worth talking about. And he prefaces it with the question, is rizq, is sustenance from the sabab? Right? Does it come about because of the intermediate cause? Or musabib, or the causer? or the primary cause, namely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, وَأَهْلُ الْوَجْهِ الثَّانِي جَعَلُوا الْحِرْفَةَ سَبَبًا لِطَلَبِ الرِّزْقِ وَأَهْلُ السَّبَبِ يَنْقَصِمُونَ قِسْمَيْنِ So he said, the second group, they made the hirfa, which you can translate as profession or means, سَبَبًا لِطَلَبِ الرِّزْقِ as a cause for seeking their sustenance. وَهْلُ السَّبَبِ يَنْقَصِمُونَ قِسْمَيْنِ And these people also can be further divided into two groups. قِسْمٌ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى السَّبَبِ لَا إِلَى الْمُسَبَّبِ فَيُورِثُهُمْ ذَلِكَ الْحِرْسَ وَتَهْوِسَاتِ الطَّمَعِ وَالْغَضَبَ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ مِنْ أَجْلِ الْمَنَعِ وَالتَّأَسُّفَ عَلَى تَعَذُّرُ السَّبَبِ عَنْ إِسْتِجْلَابِ الرِّزْقِ لِمُعَرَضَةِ الْقَدَرِ السَّابِقِ فِي الْأَزَل فَهَذَا قِسْمٌ مَذْمُومٌ وَلِعِذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا نَزَلَ بِهِمْ So this first group, out of the, the group that's looking towards the hirfa or, or the means or profession or job for, uh, as a means to get their sustenance, they say, or they look at the sabab, they look at the cause or the means, لا إلى المسبب and they don't see the musabib, they don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They see, I get a paycheck and my paycheck is giving me my sustenance and I don't see you beyond that. فَيُورِثُهُمْ ذَلِكَ يُورِثُهُمْ So it means they may be getting it by halal means, it's not the first group. So they have halal means, right, and they don't use a hila, they don't just use any way, but they try to get it in the halal way, but at the same time, they don't look beyond the sabab. They don't look towards the musabib. They don't look towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيُورِثُهُمْ ذَلِكْ So this will bequeath upon them الحرص وتهويسات الطمع So it will give them covetousness and also تهويسات uh, الطمع and also the delusionary thoughts of acquisition, of طمع, of seeking things, of acquiring material things. والغضب على الخلق and also anger with people, with creation من أجل المنع if they feel that they are prevented from getting that which they think is theirs. وَالتَّأَسُّفَ عَلَى تَعَذُّرُ السَّبَبِ عَنْ إِسْتِجْلَابِ الرِّزْقِ لِمُعَرَضِ الْقَدَرِ السَّابِقِ فِي الْأَزَلِ And also at the asuf, feeling bad or uh, upset that the sabab, this particular business or job or whatever it might be, didn't bring you istijlab al risk, didn't bring about the sustenance you were seeking, li mu'arat al qadr as sabiqi fil azal. Because it has countered the qadr, that which Allah decreed for you fil azal. So there's the asuf, like, why does it have to be this way? I put so much money into this business and it failed and it didn't work, or. You know, I went through three interview levels and then I was one of the final candidates and then I didn't get the job. And, and so this ta'asuf, right, this sort of languishing in, in, in one's self-pity and in sorrow is a sign that you're connected to the sabab, not to the musabib. فَهَذَا قِسْمٌ مَذْمُومٌ وَلِعَذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا نَزَلَ بِهِمْ Right, he said this qism, this group is madhmum. It's, it's blameworthy state to be in. It's not a praiseworthy state to be in. على سوء ما نزل من سوء ما نزل بهم for that which they have been tribulated with. So that's in terms of the first group out of the second major group who are looking towards the سبب. وقسم ثاني and then the second group out of this group ينظرون للمسبب لا للسبب. This second group they look towards the مسبب they look towards Allah سبحانه وتعالى not to this individual specific intermediate cause or intermediary cause. فَإِنْ جَلَبَ 
السبب رزقا رأوه من المسبب لا من السبب لأن الفرق بين النظر إلى السبب والمسبب فقد الغضب على الخلق من أجل المنع وفقد التأسف على خيبة السبب من استجاب الرزق والسكون بالطمأنينة إلى القسمة السابقة وضمان الله عز وجل وكفالته So this group looks towards the musabib looks towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not towards the sabab if their job or their profession or their business venture or whatever brings them rizq brings them income sustenance ra'awhu min al-musabib they see as it's coming from the musabib they see that it's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so not what we'd say shatarat al-sabab right not because of the uh, uh the effective nature of the cause itself because that's also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but ultimately it's coming from Allah that's how they see it لا من السبب not from the cause لأن الفرق because the difference between this group and the one we talked about earlier the one who only looks towards the سبب and the مسبب is فقد الغضب على الخلق من أجل المنع so if it doesn't work they don't become angry because it didn't work with people right they don't say فلان أطع رزقي as you hear a lot, this person cut off my sustenance because they fired me from the job, right? Or they didn't accept my business proposal. He doesn't have the power to do that. There's no one who has the power to stop your sustenance from coming to you. Only Allah can do that. And this person here didn't do that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided it's not going to be from this door. And so go and seek it from another door, but know that it will come from another door. So فَقْدُ الْغَضَبِ So lack of anger, not becoming anger at people or at the situation or whatever it might be because you didn't get what you thought you would get out of it. مِنْ أَجْلِ mana, Right? مِنْ أَجْلِ mana Because of being prevented. وَفَقْدُ التَّأَسُّفِ عَلَى خَيْبَةِ السَّبَبِ مِنْ إِسْتِجَابِ الْرِزْقِ And also if it fails, you don't have this تَأَسُّف because it failed. Right? You don't feel this sense of deep kind of uh, desperation or sorrow or what we call تَأَسُّف because it didn't bring you about the result that you were seeking. Rather, you have a sukun bitumainina. You have tranquility because you are contented with al qisma sabiqa, right? With that which already has decreed for you. You don't know when it's coming or how, but you know it is coming. Right? And even saying the words should give you reassurance. Right? Allah has guaranteed and He has taken you, so to speak, under His wing and He's going to take care of you. You know, imagine if a multi-billionaire came to you and said, don't worry about anything, uh, we're going to take care of you, you're going to find that throughout your life you're going to be able to eat two or three meals a day and you'll be living fine and you'll be able to do things other people that of your particular community do and you'll do the same things. We would feel reassured. We're like, oh, okay, Bill Gates is going to take care of me or Elon Musk, they're billionaires and they have all this stuff and I, okay, I feel comfortable about that. And then if they, you know, send you a check or put it in your bank account, then you feel like confident and reassured but Rabbul Izzah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in the Quran in his eternal uncreated speech and says it to you in the Quran that he's going to do that for you and we don't feel reassured so it is ty a type of a quest of faith uh, a question of faith a question of certainty of Iman that comes into play and they say that uh, tawakkul is to be more certain about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in his treasuries than what you have in your hand so if, if what you actually possess gives you certainty more than what you know Allah has in his treasuries, which la tanfed, right, which will never run out, which will never dry out, which will always be there, then you have to question your tawakkul. Are you really reliant upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course, we don't want to be tried and tested by Allah at all. I don't want to be tried and tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way where it really shakes and, 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 and tests my faith. When I find myself ma'doom, for example, that I have nothing, and then I have to and no asbab and no uh, tangible cause around me by which to seek sustenance. No one wants to be tried and tested like that. And we ask Allah SWT not to try and test us like this. But if you have it, be thankful, be grateful. And if you don't, be patient. وَيَكْفِيكَ فِي هَذَا الْمَعْنَى مَا حُكِيَ أَنَّ الْجَرَادَ وَقَعَ عَلَى زَرْعٍ كَانَ لِرَابِعَةِ الْعَدَوِيَّةِ فَلَمَّا جَاءَهَا الْخَبَرُ خَرَجَتْ فَرَأَتْ الْجَرَادَ كذلتكب زرعها فرمقت السماء بطرفها وقالت رب رزقي قد تكفلت به وعلمت أنه ليس يفوتني 
فإن شئت فأطعم زرعي أعداءك وإن شئت فأطعمه أولياءك فطال الجراد جميعه عن فهذه حقيقة رؤية الأشياء من المسبب لا من السبب So he says يكفيك في هذا المعنى He's drawing an example from one of the أولياء الصالحين uh, a meaning that what was related about uh, الجراد which is beetles that came on the uh, garden of someone by the name of Rabia al adawiyya so she is one of the well-known Sufi uh, ascetics uh, of uh, Baghdad radiallahu anha and when she saw the beetles or when people told her like you know Japanese beetles are eating your garden so the news came to her then she saw the beetles were all over her garden and they were going to destroy it فرمقت السماء بطرفها وقال then she looked to the sky and she says ربي رزقي قد كفلت به she says my lord you have guaranteed my sustenance وعلمت أنه ليس يفوتني and I know for certain that it's not going to miss me right it's going to come to me فإن شئت فاطعم زرعي أعداءك so if you wish then uh, feed my garden to your enemies here are the beetles. When shi'ta fat'imhu awliya'ak. And if you wish, you can feed it to your awliya'. Fatar al jaradu jamiru an. Then all the beetles, once she said that, flew away and left her garden. Fahadihi haqiqa tu ru'it il ashiyah min al musabbabi la min al sabab. He said, This is the reality of seeing things from the musabib, not from the asbab. Seeing things from the causer of all causes, not the individual cause itself. So, um, kind of the lesson in that is to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to seek anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we take with the asbab. So, we have something called al akhthu bil asbab, right? To ihtiram al asbab, we, we, uh, we, uh, we respect the asbab. And we do buy them because Allah put them into place, but we don't rely upon them and we don't make them the qibla of our hearts. That's the main thing. So I'm going to stop here, inshallah, because I have some questions. And then uh, in the next session, we will look at the third group uh, of these three groups. So the first group was the one that's completely blameworthy, that will use any sort of illicit and illegal and... Uh, taking advantage of anyone who gets in the way to seek their sustenance and he's not even the one to talk about them because their hal is sayyid that's a bad state may Allah not tribulate that, us with that test us with that then the second group that we just talked about which is some that look only to the sabab and the some that only look to the musabib the ones that look only to the sabab to the cause itself are also a blameworthy group even though they may seek it by halal means and then the ones who look towards the musabib so they have a hirfa they have a sabab that they live from, but they see that all that comes to them uh, is not by virtue of the cause itself, but by virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the one who put that sabab or put that cause into place. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.